Stanford University. This project is called Cracking the Neural Code, and this is an exciting opportunity that's allowed us to bring some of the new technologies we've developed here at Stanford to bear on understanding how the brain works. One has to be able to reverse engineer its function, just as you might try to reverse engineer or crack a code. So too, we're going to be using some of the new technologies now at our disposal for cracking how uh, neural circuits operate. This is a very difficult problem because the brain is a very complicated organ and a very complicated device. There are many different kinds of cells that are all intermixed and intertwined. If you want to understand how a machine works, you have to be able to look under the hood, so to speak, try to understand its inner workings. And this is exactly what we're trying to do now with the brain. We make particular kinds of cells in the brain sensitive to light. We do this using genetic tricks and this is called optogenetics. What we see here is a fiber optic cable that is carrying green light. And this is an example of the sort of device that we use to deliver light to deep brain structures. Now, how are the neurons controlled by light? Well, this is a very interesting scientific story. It comes from uh, algae and ancient forms of bacteria called archaebacteria that make light-activated ion channels. We take those tools and we put them into neurons, and this allows us to use light to control cells exactly as we want. One of the things that's made Stanford a wonderful place to do this sort of work is the interdisciplinary environment that's available here. In the Clark Center, this is the heart of the BioX program, and that's allowed us to develop this technology and to spread it and to help other people use it in a collaborative fashion. I'm fortunate to be joined in the Cracking the Neural Code venture with my colleague, Mark Schnitzer. Carl's background is in uh, neuroscience, biochemistry, and of course, psychiatry. I see patients with devastating psychiatric diseases like depression and autism spectrum disease. Our hope is that insights arising from optogenetic research and understanding the codes underlying complicated brain functions will allow us to develop new therapies for neurological and psychiatric diseases. He brings the perspective of an MD, PhD, and a physician to the research. My background is more in the hard sciences and in the engineering sciences. Um, I bring the perspective of a biophysicist, applied physicist. One of the aspects of the research that I have focused upon in my own laboratory concerns the development of some new imaging tools, in particular, uh, the use of some of the world's smallest lenses and some of the world's smallest microscopes technology that has emerged from the telecom industry, we're putting to use to make these very small instruments for looking at brain activity. What we're looking at here is an example of some of the video footage we can acquire uh, from the brain using these tiny microscopes. You can see there's a lot going on in this video. So by taking this kind of data, we can actually watch the real-time dynamics uh, as the subject performs uh, different behaviors. So just in the same way that the study of genetics has gradually over time given us progressive insight into what it means to be uh, human, uh, so too the study of neuroscience is gradually giving us a deeper and deeper understanding of the basic biological underpinnings of many aspects of human behavior. For me, this project is, of course, scientifically interesting, but it's also of great personal importance. When I see the patients in the clinic every week, I'm reminded of how much we still have to understand and how primitive our current tools are for treating neurological and psychiatric disease. This is brought home uh, on a daily basis and on a weekly basis and it's something I think about all the time. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.